It's time to rise and shout on a Thursday. Loaded edition of What's Trending on the Way. Welcome to the BYU football family. Long and athletic, really tough kid. Physical, got great ball skills. We're super excited to have him. What's Trending presented by Tim Daly Nissan, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group serving Utah since 1968. We'll get to the National Signing Day postgame show in just a little bit, yeah. but not before some breaking news. BYU Sports Nation breaking news. It is official. BYU football has hired T.J. Woods as BYU's next offensive line coach. He will hit Provo after a stop most recently at Georgia Southern. Jerem, this is a guy that has a lot of BYU ties. He's from the Gary Anderson coaching tree, if you will, was at Wisconsin and Oregon State. He certainly crossed paths with Kalani Satake along the way. The same staff, 2015. Yes, and now he's at BYU. So we speculated this was going to be it. There were reports out there. Now it's official. What kind of a difference do you expect T.J. Woods to make at BYU? First off, he also has the title of run game coordinator. We've wondered if that would be involved there. He did the same at UNLV for one Aiden Robbins. So TJ Woods certainly has a nice resume. He was with Gary Anderson, so there's your Utah State, Wisconsin, Oregon State sort of uh, trail there. Uh, most recently coached Georgia Southern on Saturday in the bowl game, right? So he comes to BYU. He looks the part. We wanted accountability guy. This guy looks like he's going to have a gruff voice and yes. call it. There were issues. Connor Pay said on Locked On uh, Cougars podcast with Jake Hatch uh, that, hey, we could not be fully accountable of each other. We were afraid of hurting people's feelings instead of saying uh, what needed to be said. Yeah. So hopefully T.J. Woods jumps in and does that. I'd be shocked if he doesn't because uh, that's part of the reason uh, that there was a change because they needed more accountability from all levels of that position. He, he has been in the mix to the point in the last couple of weeks of BYU knowing that he was going to be the guy, just waiting to officially figure it out. They want to show respect to Georgia Southern. Sure, they're the bowl that, game. Right? Yeah. That's probably why. It, it, but the report got out there from Pete Thamel and others. But he has been uh, on the recruiting trail trying to recruit the current BYU guys to stay. Part of the reason Connor Pay stays is because of T.J. Woods. And Braden one, Kime, I'm sure. One, sure. One, a change, but two, this guy. Um, so excited about that. He's got some talent to work with in that room. Connor Pay, uh, Waylon Lapuaho, Caleb Etienne, and Braden Kime are the four kind of incumbent starters coming back. You like that. And then you've got some backups in the mix and some guys off missions that we'll talk about in a second. But I, I'm excited about it. I think this is a good choice. Um, he does. He's never, like, been here. He's not a member of the church. doesn't matter. He, he knows kind of the Beehive State from Utah State. He uh, knows Kalani himself from being on the same staff in 2015 in Corvallis. And uh, here we go. TJ Woods, the next guy. Jay Hill and Kalani Satake were around Gary Anderson defenses. They know of his toughness. And that was when Coach Anderson was kind of at the peak of his career. Like when he was transitioning from Utah to Utah State and then into Wisconsin and Oregon State, like he, he was doing a lot of good things. Specifically, uh, he had a great year at Wisconsin, uh, was amazing at Utah State and rebuilding that program. So this, this feels like a tough-minded guy. If, if you're going to be on a Coach Anderson staff. O-line especially, right? Yes. And I've been screaming forever. Just give me an accountability yeah, guy. Give me sure. a guy that the players are the right amount intimidated by. And they, Just look at his picture. I'm mildly intimidated by him just looking at him. The proper amount of respect is yeah, there. I, I feel it. like he will demand that. The offensive side of BYU's staff needs it. A lot of players, coaches on the offensive side, which is great. Aaron yeah. Roderick is not overly vocal. T.J. Woods seems like he's going to be a vocal, in-your-face type of guy, and, and BYU staff needs that. He's seen here smiling when he saw the pancakes from the O-line from last year. This, this is the happiest he gets <laughs> right here. Well, you brought up Connor Pay, Love and uh, rightfully so, because he made the news last week. He said a lot of eye-opening things about the offensive line, and if you really yeah. want to gauge of like what is happening on the offensive line, Connor Pay is your guy because he's the dude that does not hold back. You have to know guy. He will tell you how it is. Yeah. So I appreciated that. He also said development has not been happening over the last three years. Hey, uh, minor issue there. Right? So not only Sorry, the accountability what? issue and worried about players' feelings and not wanting to offend people, like, we got, we got to get past that. And they believe that T.J. Woods is the man that's going to help them do that. Or, Con as you, to your point, Connor would not have come back. There were three starters that BYU could have had last year had there been better everything at O-line that went elsewhere. 
to Power 5 teams, namely Utah, namely Baylor. Yeah, un unfortunately. Um, Barrington's, Spencer Fano was being recruited. He goes up and starts at Utah. You'd think that if maybe there was someone that different, that BYU maybe had a better shot of retaining those guys. Um, how those guys jail always matters as well. And sometimes talent leaves and you're like, well, the room gets along better now or whatever. I don't, I don't know. It yeah. depends on team to team, year to year, guy to guy. TJ's but got I'm, some work to do But I'm excited sure. about it. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 for sure. Um, but rarely have we been like, you know what, BYU can't recruit a lineman. Gosh, we don't have good enough players at this position. That's not one that has struggled in the past. So I'm excited to see, one, who we can bring in from the portal. Because Kalani teased us. We'll talk about it in a second about, hey, offensive guy's coming. Mm -hmm. It was mostly defensive yesterday. Um, and then what he can do with the starters coming yep. back and the backups. So I'm stoked, man. Let's go. Okay, topic two. BYU signed two more recruits after the end of the show yesterday. So let's mention them. Uh, Kini Lau, Fonohema, defensive end, 6'5", 210, from Springville, Utah. Flip. Red Devils bringing it with three dudes in this class. Awesome. Three-star prospect, composite score of 87, uh, ranked number 12 overall prospect in the state, recruited by Utah, Oregon State, Washington State, Utah State. This is a guy that obviously is going to put on some weight, but be one of those talented pass rushers. I've had a couple of people tell me, listen, this, mm -hmm. this kid could come in and actually, uh, you know, come in and do something, which is really exciting. And we'll get to that more in a moment of this class, there's more guys like this, like Keeney Lau, Fon and Hema, that can contribute. It's not often that freshmen come in and like have a massive impact. I'm just saying they're going to push the starters, and then the starters are going to play well or not, and then these guys are ready to go when their numbers go up. There's a reason Jay Or Hill maybe is, he's a starter, who knows? Jay Hill is super excited. Sione Pogba are super excited because there's legitimate depth. There's so much size, and there's so much potential with this group yep. here. You can feel their excitement. It was palpable yesterday. This is a guy who they looked into the crystal ball, did the recruiting experts, and they saw another school besides BYU. So this was a pleasant surprise for most BYU fans that Keeney Fonohema opted for BYU. And again, this helps BYU's overall score. The composite score of 87, anytime you get a player that's 86 or above, Jerem, it's, this is a really, really good player. I'd take 85. Too. Sure. I'll, I'll yeah. dive into those numbers in a moment. Yeah. Certainly. So I love this. I, the thing I love the most about it goes along with what I was saying yesterday, and that is this is another major in-state recruiting win for BYU. They need all they can get right now, especially now that they're competing in the same conference as the team up north and the Arizona schools. Like this, this will help the Intermountain Region recruiting. Like this trend, they need it and they got it with a, with a flip of Kenny Fonahem. Jay Hill, Kelly Papinga, impact right. That whole staff, Sione Puha, they're they're doing good work. The defensive staff, doing and good I've talked work, to multiple yeah. people around the program. Yeah. They said of the defensive staff, we've never seen this type of consistent, nonstop, like urgent recruiting effort the last few weeks. Like it just was nonstop. Go, 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 go. There was real urgency. Why wouldn't it be and why wasn't it? Right. Well, I think everybody feels like they are working. Like, everyone works hard, but, like, they, they just said when you talk to someone that has seen how it's gone down over the past 10 years, they're like, like this was another level. Like, everybody works hard. This was, like, crazy, crazy. I, I get urgency. the point, and I brought this up with Kalani. You can't assume anything. Oh, you like BYU? Sweet, you're coming here. It's like, no, you got to. You gotta date the heck out of these people, if you will. Like, you gotta show the love. You gotta be there. You gotta as assume nothing. Yeah. You gotta assume you gotta work hard, right? This as is led by Jay like Hill, dude. Cruise control. No cruise control. It feels like with this staff regarding recruiting. Like, no, no, no. We gotta, we gotta move. Jay Hill set the tone. Let's assume that someone else is getting this player, unless yes. we do something great. He he set the tone, and I know that people, people are like, well, he could recruit last year. It's like, well, he didn't have a full. Year. This is no, like his had, first full recruiting stint. And he can show film of like, okay, when we're good, it looks like yes. this. 100%. All right, on to the offensive line. You were just mentioning somebody that could be added to T.J. Wood's group. It is Joe Brown, 6'4", 285 pounds, out of Lone Peak High School, another three-star prospect according to 24-7 Sports, a composite score of 86. Jeremy is a 6A All-State first-teamer in 2021. Served his mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Big-time recruit, Virginia and Baylor, Utah notably went after him hard. Now he is back and going to BYU and joins Mr. Woods' group. Another solid addition. The offense, including Joe Brown, only signed seven players total. This was a heavy defense recruiting group. Oh, yeah. Joe Brown was the seventh of the offensive players. All right. So with those signings of Keeney Fonohema and Joe Brown, that takes – BYU to 27 signees in the 2024 class thus far. As you look at all 27, that's a ton. That's a ton. It's awesome. We're used to this. 
What stands out to you about this year's signing class? Well, that, that it uh, had a better average composite score on 24-7 sports. It's not just as simple as three or four stars. So let's look at during the Sataki era what that's looked like. The best uh, composite average score was last year, 86.03. This is an 85.73 as yeah. of this morning, uh, which is good. That is the second highest in the Sataki era. Uh, it is a group that had 17 guys, 85 or higher. Reiner Swanson's a 90. Danny uh, Sa Saila, Saili yeah. is an 88. Ephraim Asiata is an 88 as well. Those are your top three. That's good. We can quantify it in a different way. Um, 81s and 82s. Those can be tough. You did have some NFL guys emerge out of that 2018 and 2019 classes, right? But the average guy, if you will. Certainly helps because you want the whole C to raise, right? And right now it feels like that, which is exciting. So BYU's in the 85 plus the last two years. We can quantify that it's getting better. Now, I don't know that BYU will ever be like in a top 30 situation nationally. I, I hope they do one day. That'd be great. Um, but if not, BYU has proven that it can make three stars into four star or five yeah. star players, a.k.a. they get drafted in the first, second, or third rounds. You're, you're a three star type player if you get round four through seven. We're seeing BYU produce NFL players at a higher clip. Some of that is out of high school. It's getting mm -hmm. better. This is high school, by the way, only, not transfer portal. And uh, obviously from the portal, they're bringing more guys, and they've done a nice job over the last couple of years of finding guys who initially may not have signed on a day like yesterday, but come around to coming to BYU and make a massive, massive difference, notably Puka Nakua and Kingsley Suamatia sure. and Aiden Robbins and others, right? As you look at the numbers, like BYU... If you're around 65 or 70, it's kind of like eh, average, right, on the composite score. Like that, that would be by definition of where you sit in college football because there are 100. You're saying the ranking? Teams. Yeah, the ranking. Good. Like, oh, okay, it's it's we've gotten kind of used to I that. I don't like that. Right, yeah. it's average, but the, on the scale of average to good to great to elite, like the realistic, I think window there is anything inside the top 55 is good. And then when you push into, like, in between 40 and 50, that's great. If you get, like, into the 30s, that would be, like, an elite I, recruiting class. Will BYU have to fork out the dough at that point Maybe. to get into that space? I don't get the sense that BYU is willing to do that at the moment. I feel like they're going to be in between 45 and 55 for probably the duration from here on out. Yeah, yeah. And uh, if you get above that... Amazing. I, now, I, I do have this question, and, and we'll explore this in the future, right, is can BYU we're, – we're talking about being uh, as good as you can be, right? Are we talking about getting the eight wins here with this, or are we talking about winning a Big 12 title? I think if we're talking about winning a Big 12 title, all these numbers need to go up, and you may need to pay people more. So we'll see. The hope is you can produce like a 2021 where you had that level of time. Like – but in the modern era, there's not been that many seasons. Like, 2020, like, asterisk. It was a great team. It wasn't the schedule. Da-da-da. A lot, lot of talent. But, like, if we're talking about winning a Big 12 title, Spence, this is a different standard of, like, how many of these guys that are 86, 87, 88, sure. 90 do you need? Right now, BYU is getting a really nice young group that hopefully will build to this. And they can do it without it. BYU has been ballers on a budget for a minute, right? Yeah. This year, five and seven, tough. But I wonder how much better it has to be to comp actually compete for a title, like somewhat consistently. I'm not talking one crazy year that it's going to happen at some point. I'm talking about competing, generally speaking, like, yeah, we're six and three in league or better every three out of five years kind of thing. The, the trend of the last few years is solid. With BYU, their composite score at number 46 last year, number 59 this year, it, it's solved. The and recruiting I, is getting better. And yeah. Coach Satake said to us yesterday, look, it, it matters for sure. We look at the metrics. Like, we compare it. We, By the we way, care about they the look at score. this more than most. The composite scores. Yes, they don't and care about the stars Look as at much. the composite scores. Yeah. But there is the element and this idea that once BYU offers, then, like, the star drops. The I don't, that's why they don't care so much about stars as yeah. they do about composite scores. I wonder about the reality of that perception. Yeah, that feels very like a conspiracy. <laughs> I I don't know. It it happens, but if they say that's how it Just happens, they're the ones recruiting. That's why they do not focus on stars so much. Yes. They focus on this the composite number. score of every individual player. That and I like that more. number, second best in the stock here.